Let's continue with our networking series and in this video we will be talking about the network routing and we will be talking about the default routing, static routing and dynamic routing followed with our real time demo. But here I have divided this whole video into two part. In the first part we will be talking about the default and static routing with our real time examples and the third part which is a bit more complex because it requires a two cloud and that's where we will be setting our dynamic routing and we will be uh, taking a two clouds for example Google Cloud and AWS and then we will be setting up the BGP then we will be setting up the gateways uh, VPN tunnel then we will also talk about the pre-shared keys and how to make that particular VPN and tunnels highly available so there is a lot to cover and I'll put all the timestamp into the description section and if you are new to this particular networking series then I have already covered four chapters talking about the IP address, CIDR, NAT, supernetting, subnetting. So just go and follow those chapters to build your basics on networking. So let's continue with our today's topic about the network routing. Let's start with the default routing and to explain the default routing I'm just taking a very basic example. So consider there is a city and in this city there are only four street designated for four direction. So here there are four street one representing east, one representing north, one representing west and one representing south and I am new to the city and I just wanted to navigate to reach to the factory and if you take a look then factory is situated in the southern part of that particular city and if I ask for a direction to reach to that particular factory then someone will say hey please follow the south street and you will eventually reach to the factory because there is only one street going to the south and that's where we call it as a default route or default uh, routing because that's the default route uh, if you follow then you will be able to reach to the particular factory and similarly if someone asks me where is the residential area or apartment then you can easily say that hey please follow the north street and that is the default street to reach to the residential area where the apartments and the houses are located. Now the question comes like how you are going to implement the default routing in a cloud service or in an on-premise data center. So here I'll be taking an example of a two cloud one is the AWS and another one is the Google cloud. So let's take a look how the networking setup will look like and how we can set the default routing in our network. Alright so let's start with our first use case which is AWS and try to understand this how default routing will work with our existing networking setup. So here you can see this is my AWS account and in that AWS account I have a VPC which is my virtual private cloud and in that cloud we will be having a subnet, route table, internet gateway and also the resources for example virtual machine running within my subnet. So here we are having AWS account in that we have a VPC and in that VPC we have a public subnet and we have our private subnet and in that public and private subnet we are having a route tables and uh, those route table will be responsible for routing the requests coming into those subnet and also we have an internet gateway for providing the internet access. All right, so let's try to understand how to fit in our default routing into this particular networking setup of our AWS. And the crucial component for this networking setup is to use the route table. And in that particular route table, we are just gonna make an entry to access the internet. And whenever you're going to access the internet, then you have a like a IP range which you need to specify, but it is an internet. So we will be using 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0 using our internet gateway. So the destination is internet and how we are going to access it through internet gateway. So here we have already added an internet gateway, but also we need to set the default route in the route table. So that's where we need to make this default entry, not default, but at at least in routing entry which is uh, default for accessing the internet and once this entry is mad to that particular route table then you will be able to access the internet from that particular subnet let me show you how it looks onto AWS so this is my AWS console and here if you type the VPC 
then in that particular VPC, we are having a subnet and in that subnet, we are having a two public subnet and two private subnet. Although onto the diagram, if I would show you, then I have represented only one public subnet and one private subnet because I don't have much space over here onto this particular slide. But in reality, I have a two public subnet and two private subnet. But let's take a look onto the public subnet and I can show you like how the uh, route table is associated with it. So we have seen that this is our VPC, which is our test VPC in Mumbai. And in that we have a subnet, which you can see over here. This is our test public subnet. And here we are having a test private subnet of our Mumbai region. Okay. And here we are having a route table, which is, I already told you is a crucial component. So here we will be taking a look onto the public route table and which you can see over here. And this public route table is sitting over this particular subnet. All right. So let's take a look onto this particular route table over here and if you go further then you will find the entry which is a destination which is ending with a 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 and the target is internet gateway and this is the id of our internet gateway if you click on it then it will show you that this is a test internet gateway which i have set up to enable the access to internet all right so now we have seen the route table and we have also seen the routes within it, uh, which is our uh, uh, default route uh, to access the internet. So anyone who tries to access the internet from that particular subnet is going to follow this default route and this default route will enable them to access the internet. All right. Now the thing is, where is my virtual machine which is located can access the internet. So for that, what you need to do, you just need to type the EC2 since I'm talking about the AWS. So that's why the virtual machines are called EC2. And if you take a look, then there is a one uh, virtual machine which is running. This is the test virtual machine which I have created for default route. And if you click on this instance ID, then here you will see the subnet, uh, which you can see. This is the subnet, which is for our public subnet where the instance instance is present okay so here uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll also try to show you that how I can access the internet from this particular virtual machine so here this is the private IP which you can see 12.0.1.40 and if I show you my terminal so here I am already inside my machine and if you don't know how to set up this EC2 this VPC then I have already covered those into my AWS series then just go and check those session on how to spin up your virtual machine within your uh, VPC subnet and setting up your route table so I would highly recommend to check that particular session but anyway now we need to test the internet so what I'll do I'll just try to ping the google.com and here you can say my pings are going successful which means i am able to access the internet from this particular virtual machine which is using the default route of internet and similarly uh, if i do the curl on ipinfo.io so this is a website which just shows you the your current location your current ip address of your virtual machine so here you can see uh, this is the ip which, which is a public ip of my virtual machine and this is the location where i have a spin up my virtual machine which is mumbai and that you can also verify from here also so this is the public ip which is like a 650204 and 58 and which is exactly same as over here so this is how the default routing works in AWS. Let's take a look onto the Google Cloud as well. In Google Cloud, we are having the similar setup and here also we are having a VPC with our public subnet and our private subnet. So let's take a look like how the routes are defined into our Google Cloud. So to define a route in the Google Cloud, we will be having a firewall rules and in that firewall rules, we will be making an entry and that entry is again going to the destination, which is our internet through our internet gateway. So it is a bit different from a AWS, but it works exactly the same way. The concept is exactly the same way. We need to reach to the destination and to use the uh, uh, internet, we need to have an internet gateway. And after that, you will have uh, access to your internet. So this is how the whole setup is gonna look like. And we are gonna set up a virtual machine inside our public subnet to set up and access the internet using this particular default route of internet in our Google Cloud. Here is my Google console and here in the search box, if you type the VPC, then there is a VPC network. And here I have created uh, one more VPC for me, which is a demo jhook VPC. I'm just gonna click on it. And in the VPC, you will find a subnet. And here you can see this is my private subnet. And here you can see this is my public subnet. I'm just gonna zoom in a bit over here. 
Here in the VPC, you will find a tab for a route. So if you click on the routes, then you will find all the routes. So for that, we need to choose the region first over here. So I'm just gonna choose the Europe North one region, click on view, and that will show you all the routes which has been created inside that particular VPC with our subnet. So here you can see there are three routes and the, all the three routes are the default routes which you will get once you create your VPC. So here the first route is the default route with the destination 0.0.0, .0 which means it is a route to internet. And this is uh, again attached with our internet gateway. So in GCP, we don't create an internet gateway, but there is a next hop or the next destination, which is our internet gateway using this particular destination. And that's how we know that, hey, we have a route to access the internet. And next, I'm just gonna show you like how we can uh, access the internet with our virtual machine. So for that, uh, if in the search box, if you type the virtual instances and then go to the virtual machine, which I have already set up. So this is my test instance, which will be using our default route to access the internet. So click on this instance and here click on this SSH so that you can SSH into that particular machine. Click authorize over here. All right, so here's my terminal and I have already accessed my machine using the SSH. So let's do a few tests. So I'm just gonna do ping on google.com and see if the ping is responding. And here you can see I'm able to successfully ping and access the google.com. And similarly, if I clear the screen and if I do the curl on IP, info.io then here you can see this is the information which are available from my uh, my virtual machine and the ip address is 34881261814 which you can verify uh, from here also if you go back over here into the instance detail and here you can see the same IP address which is a public IP address and this particular test instance is running into my public subnet which is using the uh, default route to access the internet so this is how we set the default route in AWS and GCP Let's talk about the static routing and how it works. And to understand the static routing, we are gonna take an example of the subnets within the VPC and their IP ranges associated with those subnets. Here onto the screen, you can see the AWS setup of our VPC, the public subnet on the left-hand side and the private subnet on to the right-hand side. So to enable the static routing between these two subnet, we need to set the route in the route table and how to do that. So for that, we are just gonna create an entry into the route table and in that route table, we are just gonna mention the destination and here you will see a little bit more difference over here. So let me, uh, use the pencil over here so here you can see this is the ip range of our vpc and if it ends with 16 then you are having a more number of ip ranges uh, available for you i have covered the whole session on how to calculate the ip ranges based on this cider notation just refer to that uh, video because that will uh, make your concept clear on like how many ips are available but in short, if the CIDR range is ending with a lesser number, so here it is 16, then you will have a large number of IPs available to you. And if it's ending with a higher number, here you can see 24, then you will have a little lesser number of IPs available to you. But why I'm explaining to you is because this CIDR ranges will help you to understand the static route. So here, this is our public subnet, this is our private subnet, and here we are having our route table. So here we have created a static route uh, with the destination 12.0.0.0 slash 16. And if you see this particular IP range or CIDR notation, then it belongs to the VPC. So these are not belonging to our subnets, which you can see over here. So these are not belonging to our subnet, but this CIDR range is ending with slash 16. So this is having a little bit more IP ranges. So VPC is always bigger than the subnet. So all of these subnets are within that VPC. So if I'm taking this higher range, then I'm including the subnet IP ranges also into that particular IP range. So this is a static route, which tells you that, hey, if the destination is 12.0.0 slash 16, then route it to the local. And we will have a two route tables over here with the this particular entry. One for public subnet, which you can see, it will have the same entry with this one and local. So local means this particular subnet over here. 
and this particular uh, subnet i'm talking about uh, this particular subnet will also have the similar entry with the same ip range and it will also make it local so these two static route will tell hey all of these uh, ips or requests which is destined to this particular ip range which is this one should go to that particular subnet so that's where it calls it as a static routing let's take a look on to our aws console and see how we have defined this static route so here on the search box if you type the vpc then click on this particular vpc and here you will find the route table so go on the route tables and we will be looking out for public route table and private route table so let's open all of those like there are two only so i'm just going to open into new tab so here this is my public route table and here you can see the route and here you will find a route which is our static route which is ending with 12.0.0.0 slash 16 and that is local which means all of these uh, traffic which is destined to this uh, CIDR range will go to this public subnet. And similarly, uh, all of those requests which are destined to 12.0.0 slash 16 will also end up into the private uh, subnet if the request is originating from that particular subnet or destined to that particular subnet. And here is the target is local. So these are some static route which needs to be associated and these are going to be the hard coded routes within that route table. So that's why we call it as a static route. And of course it is hard coded that doesn't mean that you cannot change it of course you can change it but yeah these are some static entries uh, which you need to change it manually otherwise those entries will always be there into the route table so that's why we call it as a static route similarly on a google cloud so let's take an example of that same vpc which we have seen for default routing so i'm just going to click on this particular vpc and go to the routes over here select the region Europe, North 1, Finland, click on view and here you will find the static routes for those default subnet, not default subnet, but the private and public subnet. Here you can see this is the destination IP ranges and uh, the IP ranges in the GCP is a bit different from the AWS which I have set up over there. But anyway, the concept is still the same. So anything which is destined to this one uh, will always be associated with this particular uh, subnet. So this is a route, but this will be associated with our subnet. And those subnets are public subnet and private subnet. And here there is another one route for our another subnet. So this is how this static routing works. And you can just manipulate and modify based on your requirement and how to set up your uh, routes between the subnet or any other uh, VPC see if you want to set it up.